In this episode of Sage is Awesome, we are going to take a look at controllers. So before we begin, I just want to show you this GitHub page. So this is a GitHub page for Sober WP controller, which is used with Sage. And uh, you don't have to install it on, or anything. You can if for some reason you don't have controllers installed in your Sage installation. I don't know what the, uh, why that would be, but you can install it if you want. Uh, I just wanted to show you this page because all of the documentation for controllers is actually on this page. They are not on the official Sage website for some reason. So you can take a look at controllers right here. So before we begin also, <laughs> let's just take a look what I did behind the scenes. Uh, so first of all, in my uh, dashboard, you can see that I installed uh, two plugins, three actually. So custom post type UI, because I wanted to create uh, products custom post type, faker press, so I can fake the data for those custom post types, and of course, advanced custom fields. So we have this products right here. Uh, this is the list of products and uh, if we go to edit them uh, you can see that we have a few custom fields right here so price and discount and this color which i don't know why i put that here because we are not going to be using it uh, never mind that uh, on the code side uh, we have uh, this so we have archive uh, dash products dot blade PHP, which is in our views directory. So just like you would do with vanilla uh, WordPress installation, uh, but instead of calling the, uh, the file archive products blade dot PHP, you would just call it archive, archive products dot PHP. Uh, so this is our archive, and you can see it uh, right here. So this is the list of my uh, products. And also if you click the see the product, then you would go to the single product page, which is controlled by this file right here. So single dash products dot blade dot PHP. So same as in normal WordPress instead, uh, but you just have to add blade to the name of your file. So that's about it. Nothing too complicated here. Uh, on the archive page, we just have this uh, while loop, so normal WordPress loop, and we are just uh, outputting the title and the permalink to the product page. And on the product page, we also have a loop and we are just outputting the title. And that's about it. So all of our controllers are in app controllers, and then you have uh, app.php which you get out of the box with sage and front page.php uh, which is just an empty controller right there is nothing in it but in app php we can see what uh, the controllers are actually used for so controllers are used so that you can add some logic to your site but don't not write them in your templates and not pollute your templates with business logic so for example right here we are just these are just simple examples. So we are getting a site name. So as you can see, this is public function site name. So to call that function, and I just have to say something else about uh, this specific controller. So whatever you write in app.php controller is going to be available throughout your site. Uh, later on, you will see that we can create uh, controllers which are specific to the pages or template on our site. So for example, front page controller is going to be used on index.blade.php in your views folder. Uh, so this is a simple co controller or simple controller function, which is just going to output the name of your site. Uh, so to access it, I, ch I can just go to single products.blade.php and I can write something like this. So site name, right? As you can see, it's called site then capital name, uh, capital N aim, uh, but uh, the naming convention convention is that uh, you would just uh, turn this uh, into underscores. So site name. If I save this and go right here, as you can see, I get Sage theme tutorial. Uh, there is something called a static function that you also get with controllers. And these functions you can use inside of a loop. So public functions are just uh, functions that will output some general data 
to your site or to your template and you can use the, uh, use them there but you can't use them inside the loop i mean you can but they will always give you the same information while with the static functions you can put them inside the loop uh, you can add some arguments to that function and there will output the data specific uh, to that iteration of the loop so this is not a very good example actually because it, this just depends on what page you are and it's going to output the title of that page but to access a static function uh, you have to do it a little bit differently than with uh, just this normal public function uh, so you would do something like app so the name of your controller and then the name of your function so in our case it's title right save this and now we should get uh, the title of this current page okay so i'm just going to show you now a bit more examples so that we bring this home a little bit better because as i said uh, these examples right here in app.php are just so simplistic uh, so we are not going to take a look at them uh, in much detail Okay, so let's create a controller for our single products.blade.php. And to do that, you would just uh, create it, of course, in controllers. And uh, you would name that file uh, just like the name uh, for the template that you want to create a controller for. So in our case, it's going to be single products.php. Right? So you would use this. Uh, I think it's a camel case or python case whatever uh, so this is our controller for our single products template and i'm just going to copy everything from here paste it right here and just delete everything in it right so we have a, a empty controller so one thing i want to show you uh, right out of the gate uh, which is pretty cool i think uh, is uh, controllers comes with support for acf or advanced custom fields so to get the access to all of your advanced advanced custom fields you can of course do that in the code with the get field function but i think it's easier you should you uh, to do something like this so you just do protected protected acf equals true and that's it now you have access to all of your uh, advanced custom fields if i save this uh, go to my browser and go to the acf settings page as you can see i have this field group products and they have the price discount and this color that we are not using so uh, to access the price or to show it on your template you would just do uh, when you turn on this uh, protected acf equals true you can just go to your single products and you can just uh, do something like price let's put it in strong tags right price and now if we go right here oh i'm sorry <laughs> i just i didn't do something right and that's uh, this so this is currently still called app so you have to uh, rename it to be uh, single products okay save it now refresh it as you can see i get the price uh, for my product also you have the access to discount so just like uh, the name of uh, of your variable is in advanced custom fields you would just do it right here with uh, something like discount right go right here and the discount is 13 percent okay so this is pretty easy uh, this is the way you would access your uh, ACF fields uh, but let's do something more complicated so let's say that we want to show a price uh, with uh, the discount applied to it so uh, I'm going to create a public function uh, we are going to use it inside of a loop but since this is a single page uh, we don't need to worry about that so we don't have to create a static function because uh, those da the data that we are getting is always going to be the same uh, just one more quick note you can't use this unfortunately on the archive pages 
because this depends on the page you are currently on and on the archive pages you would have a list of let's say products uh, which is going to go through our loop and then uh, you don't have to, uh, this kind of access to ACF fields. But for the single pages, uh, you can just do this. And also, let me just show you uh, right here down somewhere. You don't have to get all of the fields. Uh, you can just get few fields. So where is it? ACF okay right here so uh, if you do protected ACF true you get all of the fields that you have on that page if you do uh, protected ACF and then the name of the field you would just have access to that field and uh, this is the way you would get access to multiple fields that you want uh, okay so what were we doing yeah well, let's create another function right here so we are going to create a function that is going to calculate uh, the discounted price and to do that you just do public function and in that public function we are going to define a price so the price is going to be get field so this is normal way of accessing acf fields get field uh, get field price and then we want to do discount which is in our case 13 percent you would do get field discount okay and now we want to calculate it uh, this is going to be price minus uh, discount divided by 100 times price right so we would get the discounted price and now we just return that price so this is our function so if you didn't use controllers you can of course do all of this but you would have to write all of this code inside of your template and then pollute your template with business logic which you don't want to do uh, whenever you can you try to use controllers okay so how do we access this well since since this is a public public function then we have an access to a variable called calculate underscore discount so to display it right here i would just do something like h3 discount and then we just display it right here Did we call it calculate discount? Calculate discount, right? Save this. Uh, go to our browser, and as you can see, the calculated discount is seven hundred three point eight three uh, dollars, or whatever the or whatever currency you are using. Okay, so let's now try do the same thing, but on our archive page. So I would just create another controller, which is going to be called just like my pages or my archive is, so archive products. Okay, and I'm just going to copy all of this, paste it right here, uh, call this archive products. And we don't need ACF. And uh, we want to just show the calculated discount on our page. Let's call this discounted price. Okay, discounted price. Uh, we get the same logic right here, but of course, since this is going into our loop and it's going to depend on every iteration of that loop, we have to call this a static function. So static function, discounted price, save it. Now we go to our archive products and below the link, we can just add a discount, which is going to be accessed by doing, so first of all, the name of your controller. And then discounted price. and save this. Let's go to our browser, 
refresh this page and as you can see now every one of our products gets the discounted price okay so let's do one more example and we call it a day uh, so let's say that on our products page we want to show the related products and we don't want to have much logic to it we just want to actually show let's say for example five random products every time somebody accesses our page uh, so you would just create another public function uh, call it related products and in here so I would suggest that if you are using controllers and you are accessing uh, custom queries WordPress custom queries you always write them in your inside of your controllers because you don't want that logic inside of your template so you can do something like args equals and uh, then the list of arguments so post type type is in our case is going to be products and uh, if you don't know what uh, WordPress uh, custom queries are I have a uh, a whole playlist just about uh, WordPress uh, custom queries. Uh, then we want to show five posts per page, and uh, we want to order be, order order them by random. Okay, and now we have our arguments. Let's create our query, and now we just need to return that query. Okay, so now we have set up our custom WordPress query and uh, to display it, we would actually just use a normal WordPress loop, but instead of uh, just doing uh, while have posts and so on, we would send uh, this query right there or this function right there. So in our single products page, uh, we can do something like related products. and I can just copy this out right so this is a normal query which is just going to show uh, the title of our items and instead of just doing have posts you would do related uh, products have posts and related products the post okay save this uh, go to our browser click on the first one and as you can see we get related products and now if I refresh the page as you can see they are changed every time because we said that we want to order them randomly so we get always five random products on our page okay so this has been it for this video and probably for this series however if I run into some more cool stuff about Sage I will definitely make an episode about it uh, next, uh, I don't know what we are going to be actually doing next, but some people have uh, told me in the comments that I should try tr Timber out. I did try it a couple of years ago, I wasn't too impressed about it, but maybe it's gotten better by now. And also I want to try Themosis, Themosis looks uh, very nice to me, so I would probably, I will probably make one video about each of these frameworks. Anyway, everything we did here will be available for you on GitHub. The link will be in the description below. Also, the link for this will be in the description below. And as always, thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one.